pretty solid and consistent. She shares row three with Charlie Turner. Japanese driver Ryo Hiruka is on row four with Santeri Kalio of Finland. And the top ten completed by Xavier Pozzoli, cart 305 from France, and by Ed Brand from Great Britain. Jan Yonk and Maxi Weinzel, row six. Ludwig Morin and Antoine Bauton, row seven. Luke Varley and Brian Earden, row eight. Sam Shippers and Christian Torsen, row nine. Kenny Vermeulen and Antoine Lupecoeur completing the top ten, uh, the top twenty, on row ten. Guess who starts stone last? Connor Jupp. Guess who will not finish stone last? Well, I don't believe it will be him. So, ten lap race for groups B and E in seniors. Oh, sorry, the 10 lap race for Groups B and E has just been won by Max Verstappen from Charlie Eastwood, Joey Van Splinteren for Groups A and D, kicking off with Harry Webb on pole position and Carol Dabsky on the front row. Big thank you to all of you that have tuned in online. Big thank you to those of you here at Castelletto. And uh, as you will be appreciating those of you here, informing you online, the rain has stopped. Still not sunny, still quite dull but a lot better than it has been. Well, who's your money on on this one? Do hope that Mark Ferenc can have a full 10 race distance. Same for Carol. Harry Webb was a little disappointed. I mean, a fourth place and a victory might have been good enough for some people, but Harry didn't feel too chuffed about that. Nikki Tihonen raced in uh, CIK races in the Academy Trophy and the Under-18 World Championship, but making the move to the Rotax Euro Challenge, and very, very welcome he has been too. So, myself, Ken Walker, Chris Hartley in the commentary box, Sarah Dryhurst at trackside, hope that we're bringing you the sort of coverage that you want. Hope that we're helping you understand the racing. This looks like a good start. Let's see how we go. Oh, it's not a very level start, but it is de deemed a start. Harry Webb taking the lead from Carol Dabsky. But all of a sudden, that's a big wide outside sweep, isn't it? And Harry Webb, not for the first time today, getting a really stunningly fast start from pole position. But Carol Dabsky going through in second place. Third place cart number 282 is Mark Ferenz. And whilst I've said many times that we're absolutely neutral in the commentary box, we wouldn't like to see Mark Ferenz have another non-finish. He's had a non-start and a non-finish. But Harry Webb jumping into a big lead. Carol Dabsky from the off-pole position, getting himself a very, very sensible start and tucking himself in safely into second place. Mark Ferenz and uh, Charlie Turner, I noticed. It was Nick Tehonen who had also called. Didn't spot Eva Benes. And I'm just trying to see if the French lady can improve on fifth place. She's two or three times this afternoon and this morning seen herself in uh, the top five. Just let's concentrate, though, on the race leaders. Harry Webb actually being caught slightly by Carol Dabsky because uh, he had a bigger lead than that. And your third place driver coming through cart 239 is Nikki Tihon and the driver from Finland. Oh dear, Eva Benes has not managed to sustain her start going through only in 10th place. Always looking for where Connor Jupp gets to on the opening lap. From 30th in the starting position to 19th is the answer. OK, good battle going on for third and fourth between Tihon and, and Turner. They're running nose to tail onto the back straight. Tihonen just ahead at the moment. There with the red helmet. Charlie Turner glued to his tail in fourth position. Harry Webb leads. Carol Dabsky second. Both been on great, uh, great performances from them so far today. Both very quick every single time they've been at. Tihonen, Turner, Pozzoli and then Jan Jonk are completing the top six as it stands. Pozzoli's been pretty quick today as well, hasn't he? Uh, all the way through the day. So he's enjoying these uh, conditions. A lot of drivers in the top ten have come into the top ten, have made their way from low down the grids already, haven't they? And Pozzoli is a good example. I've never really mm. thought of him as a top French driver. He's going so well here today. He is, yeah. Right, there's that battle for third place coming through the final turn here. Over the line it goes. 2-3-9 with a turquoise nose cone. That is uh, Tihonen. Charlie Turner just falling back away from him ever so slightly. There they go out of turn one. Past the assembly area. 
third and fourth into turn three now. Then the left-hander at turn four. You see, you see it's still raining, not as much as it has been earlier on today. Certainly a much less wet line, and more of a damp line now forming. And Moran is, Ludovic Moran is up into fifth position now, ahead of Pozzoli. Jan Jonk is there in seventh. Max Weinzil in eighth place. Luke Varley's had two really good runs through the order. Uh, then he had a DNF, I'm afraid, in his third run. So if he can get another solid one here, he, uh, he should well, easily qualify for the pre-final, I would have thought. Former Tony Cartworks driver, Chris, so we know the talents there. Absolutely right. He has been uh, very good today. One of these, uh, one of actually quite a few drivers, seven or eight drivers that we've seen attacking and coming through the field and making the most of the conditions. So he's there in ninth place, Luke Varley. Ever Bennis just behind him in tenth. Kenny Vermeil is just outside the top ten. Oh, Chris, I want to cut in Ed Brand. Whatever has happened to Edward Brand? He wasn't in the top ten, but I didn't expect him to see to see him a mile last. So Edward Branding Cart 202, something gone seriously wrong. Yes, right down the order, down in 23rd. Well, no, lower than that, he's right at the back, isn't he? He's about 30th, so, and he's a good half a lap behind. Still this battle for third place going on between uh, Nick Tone and, and uh, right on his tail now is... Uh, is Charlie Turner. There was two tenths of a second between them as they went over the line. It was less than that as they go through the camera shot now. I think they're being caught by Moran as well. Yes, they are. Moran is quicker than the two ahead of him. So 255, little bit Moran catching them up. Third, fourth, and fifth all running together. Then you've got the next group of carts running sixth, seventh, and eighth. Very slow for Ed Brand over the line, and I'm afraid he's headed for retirement. So Ed Brand was well, he had a second and a fourth today in his first two races. Then a DNF. So and we saw uh, at Genk in the first round, drivers having mostly good runs, but one bad run, one DNF, hugely added to their points. And remember, the lowest points uh, qualifies best. So naught points for a win, two points for a second, three points for a third. But of course, if you finish 30th, you suddenly get 30 points slammed onto your total. It can completely ruin your, your whole weekend. Felice Tiani last week had four victories in five heats and a DNF. Started on the fifth row, 10th. Yeah, exactly. So tight, isn't it? So Harry Webb leads the way. 2.3 seconds clear. He's looking for his second uh, win of the day. He's been thereabouts in all of his runs. Top five in all of his races so far. Carol Dabsky, likewise, has been right up there. Charlie Turner, he's now third. So Charlie Turner got through at the end of that lap. Ahead of uh, the 239 cart of uh, Nicky Tohone and the Finnish driver. And then we've got the 255 machine of uh, Ludwig Moran still closing up to them. He's done the fastest lap of the race, Ken's just pointed out as well. 108.913. Yeah, he's about two tenths of a second quicker than the race leader. So Moran going very well in fifth place. Race leader, he's making his way through your camera shot now. This is the final turn of the lap. Harry Webb goes through and five laps complete. He's at the halfway mark. Carol Dabsky over the line in second. Then Charlie Turner with a white nose cone and red helmet there. Comes through your shot in third. He's just going into turn one now. A couple of cart lengths behind him is Moran, who is now fourth and ahead of Tionen. Chris, Luke Varley, who we've talked about, picking up a driving standards flag. Luke Varley, the former world number one, the former European champion, seventh on the track in cart 279, picks up a driving standards flag. That might not be his first of the day as well, I think. <laughs> but, you know, if you've got to battle through the field, things are going to happen, I suppose. But solely for Malin and Vinesill also in the top 10. Connor Jupp from the back again. He's up to 12th place. How much overtaken has that young man done today? I've lost count. He must have gained something like 60 places today, mustn't he, in his three races from the back of the field. His best result being, what was he, seventh last time out, wasn't he, from the very back of the field. So, well done, Connor. Up to 12th place and still with just under half the race to go, Ken. Well, indeed, this is lap six of a 10-lap race at the half-race distance. Webb, Dabsky and Turner, the one, two and three. Ludwig Morin, four. Nikki and five. Jan Jonk, six. Luke Varley, seven on a yellow card. Xavier Pozzoli, eight. Kenny Vermeulen, nine. And Alex Weinzel, the Austrian driver, completing the top ten. Let's have a look. There's no change other than Luke Varley going up to sixth place, which may have been the move that drew the flag. Brian Eardon moves into the top 10 at the expense of Alex Weinzel and Connor Jupp holding station at 12th place. Moran's just gone through to third ahead of Charlie Turner at the start of the lap. So Ludwig Moran, this is his best race of the day. It was his best race of the year so far, I think. Much better than he went in uh, Genk. So Ludwig Moran 
in cart 255 uh, now has made his way up into uh, into fourth place well we were trying to oh, third a little third bit place, of a spin there for cart 244 244 is uh, Zabalza the Mexican driver that's not his first spin of the day so sorry that the Mexican's struggling as he is very unfortunate. And uh, Mark Ferenc, who qualified so, so well for row two starts. Chris, you fear that he's not going to make the cut. He's still mm. racing. See, but he's right, 29th actually. with a non-finish and a non-start before that. Yeah, no, real shame for him. Disastrous day. Cruel, isn't it? To karting and motorsport. You go so well one day, it all goes wrong the next. Harry Webb, 3.8 seconds clear, making his way through turn four. See the gap that he's got. He's just running out of shot there, second, third, and fourth. And now, third, Ludwig Moran, having charged up through the field from what was he, 13th on the grid, Ludwig Moran. Uh, and he's set catching a new uh, fastest lap on that lap, Chris. He has, yeah. And he's, caught, he's catching uh, Carol Dabsky. So uh, he is three quarters of a second a lap quicker than Carol Dabsky in second place. And he's got two and a half laps to try and catch up. And I think he could do it. He's only 1.4 seconds behind. So in theory, when we get to the start of the next lap, if he keeps catching up like this, he's going to be on the tail of second place. So a battle still to be had here. Yeah, Harry Webb, 3.8 seconds to the good, but a potential blanket finish for second place, as Chris points out. Ed Brand comes back out. So the point that has happened previously, a guy who's had to go into the circuit comes back out just to see if he's sorted out the problems. No points score. Well, too many points scoring. You know what I mean? Heat points scoring for Ed Brand. But he's back out. See if he can get that cart number 202 driving something like he wants it. Harry Webb leading by four and a half seconds on the penultimate lap. No danger of slicks ever coming out. I don't think this afternoon it started raining heavier again now. So Webb, then Dabsky, then Moran, just 1.1 seconds between second and third places. Now they're about to make their way onto the back straight. There they are. You can see them coming towards you. There's the leader, Harry Webb, front of the camera. Second and third, the gap coming down all the time between them. Harry Webb running across the top of the shot. Down into that right-hand corner. There's second. There's third at the top of the shot. And there's fourth. So Dabsky, Morin and Turner. Second, third and fourth. Ludwig Morin. It is in this race. Not Philip. And then Nicky Tihonen is still in fifth. Luke Varley in sixth position in cart 279. And not too far behind them. We've got Jan Jonk in seventh place. Connor Jupp is 11th. Checkered flag is starting to be unfurled. Got another lap and a bit to go, though. Through they come over the start finish line. Harry Webb begins the final lap of the race and he has looked commanding. He's uh, he might have stepped up from juniors into seniors this year, uh, Ken, but he's just got this air of invincibility, invincibility about him already. And he didn't get on the podium at, uh, at Genk in the final, but I think he's got a chance this weekend, hasn't he? An absolutely seamless transition yeah. from juniors to seniors. And Chris, that's the mark of a real good one. Yeah, he's looked very, very solid today. Even better, I think, than he did at Genk. So, Webb and then Dabsky. Dabsky's uh, less than a second clear now, though, in this battle for second place. Ludwig Moran still trying to reel him in on this final lap of the race. Charlie Turner there in fourth as a bat marker. There's Harry Webb just about to go into the right-hand hairpin. Takes a wide sweeping line in. Second and third, the gap coming down all the time, but only half a lap to go now. Very late on the brakes there for Ludwig Moran. Can he do anything? He's only got three corners to go. Two corners to go for the race leader. There's the back marker. Harry Webb is about to come through. There he is. Harry Webb coming through now into the right-hander. As the rain falls heavier again, he takes the line out of the corner to the checkered flag and look at this the battle for second place as moran got through as he's done it. he's had a big attack here not quite he had a big go but carol dabsky just about fended him off moran had a luck up the inside he got fully alongside carol dabsky into the final corner but carol got the better run out of the turn and in the drag race to the checkered flag it was carol that uh, took second place moran third charlie turner fourth nikki tonen and luke varley Rounding out the top six, then Yonk seventh, but solely eighth over the line in ninth for Malin. Eden in tenth, Connor Jupp in eleventh place. So Connor again making a lot of places up early on and then sort of hitting a wall halfway through the race, really. But I suppose the higher up the order you get, the harder it is to get past people, isn't it? Just as Chris Hartley predicted, the Carol Dabsky Ludwig Morin battle went right to the wire. There's point three. Two seven of a second between them, but it was actually closer than that on the penultimate turn.
So, Harry Webb winning that one by five full seconds. You don't get a lot more dominant than that. But a good blanket finish between Dabsky second and Morin third. That's Ludwig Morin as Ed Brand goes over and actually completes the full 10-lap race distance, but does so in 30th place. Fourth, Charlie Turner. Fifth, Nicky Tihonen. Sixth, Luke Varley. Uh, then end the results. Down in the pit lane with the rain coming down again, though. Let's hear from our pit lane reporter, Sarah Dryhurst. Well, I'm here with Luke Varley now. Luke, you came from 15th down to 6th. However, on uh, lap 4, warning flags came out for you. Um, yeah, it's a tough race. I had a little battle with um, the Cosmic Driver early in the race, so that's why I got the warning, I think. So, yeah. Well, that's, pre that's pretty good feat from 15th to 6th. Are you pleased with that result? Yeah, um, today's been quite good, apart from the last heat. Uh, before this we had a puncture so I didn't finish the race but starting from 15 is always difficult in the rain is hard to overtake here with it being so slippy off the off the line so gain places in each heat so I've got to be happy really. Now the second's very different and the conditions certainly are from yesterday how are you finding them? Um, to be honest it's suiting us better today in the rain um, had good finishes should make the final so we'll see tomorrow what the weather does but hopefully it'll stay rain will be a better chance for me to win. Best of luck to you Luke. Thanks very much, Sarah. Good to uh, hear from the drivers straight after the race. Well done, Sarah, for all your uh, work this morning and this afternoon in not very nice conditions. So Sarah Dryhurst uh, there getting the reaction straight away as soon as they come off uh, circuit. So uh, that is the end of the afternoon 